in the service industry? Like how long have you been um, doing it? Have you been working at different restaurants? What's that look like? So whatever, since I was 15, I've been serving tables. I'm 21 now, so six years. I started off at a restaurant in Benton called Dan's at 30 Diner. And I was a server there until I moved to college, Jonesboro. And I've been working at Lazari Italian Oven for, I guess, almost three years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How has that been? Like, how do you perceive your job or how do you explain that to your friends? And do you love it? Do you hate it? I like it. I think I'm going to be a little sad whenever I have to stop doing it, but it, it takes a lot. It puts a lot on your body. It strains you. Um, and I kind of feel like everyone needs to do it. Everyone needs that experience because it's taught me a lot. It's taught me communication skills, um, just, you know, dealing with people, dealing with difficult people for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think, I really think it's taught me a lot. I mean, I've been doing it for six, I mean, six years is a long time. I feel like. Yeah, for sure. So, I think that I, if you've been doing it for that long, you have a pretty good take on like what it's like, you know, mm -hmm. as far as the pros and cons and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, like having that experience, do you think, other than what you've learned, do you think that you've appreciated or it was a good investment on your time in other regards? Yes, I definitely feel like it was a good investment considering if I were to have a minimum wage job, which is what most people would have in high school or college, I wouldn't be making near as much as I make now because when you serve, you make based off of performance. So you could walk out of there with a hundred dollars for only working two hours or if, whereas if you were working at like target or something you'd work walk out with thirty dollars and that's just i feel like it's not fair to work a job and to be handed a twenty dollar bill or thirty dollars it just isn't right to me so i like being able to do as much as i can earn as much as i can and then that's the end of it that's interesting that you say that because like i think that's very true and some people i guess when they work at target or whatever that job looks like it's kind of like a guaranteed pay and yeah. For someone that may be peeking into the service industry or be unsure about what that looks like, you know, it kind of sounds too really variable, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that that's what most people fear. And so you said it's based on performance. So you, I'm assuming are really good at your job. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say I'm horrible, but yeah. yeah do, you, do you compare yourself as far, like when, when I worked at um, I used to work at a marina and I cleaned boats, but then I also just like pumped gas for boats. And that was a very tip based job as well. Like the majority of my pay was through tips. Right. So obviously we were kind of competing every single day. And I don't know if that's a similar experience that you have. Like, are you guys all sharing how much you made for a shift and like who's winning, I'm who's getting stiffed more? <laughs> We complain about bad tippers and stuff, but I don't think we're necessarily competitive about it. Um, I feel bad for people if they get stiffed. Austin, oh my gosh, he gets so mad if someone doesn't tip him. But I, with me, I just take it with a grain of salt. Um, it, I mean, serving definitely is a gamble though. I've had nights where I've walked out with $14, but I feel like, you know, whenever that happens, I just remind myself, this isn't gonna be the last time it happens. Just move on. You're gonna have a better day later. Mm -hmm. Yeah we don't share tips or anything. So we get to keep our own. I mean, I'm not worried about anyone else, but me. <laughs> right. True. Yeah. So what, um, what like do you do or what tricks do you say you have, I guess, as, as making yourself good at it. So like, obviously communication is the, the broad way of describing it, but like what actual communication things are you doing like how are you connecting with people what are y'all talking about like what is it that gets you a little bit of a uniqueness and flair to you I guess well for one I feel like I kind of morph myself into who, whatever that table I don't know how to explain this like if a table seems to be really jokey and happy I'll be that person I'll be jokey and mm -hmm. happy more quiet and serious I'll act like I'm wearing like a five-star restaurant I'll just I don't know I kind of I kind of be who they are um in addition one thing I learned whenever I first started serving uh the guy who trained me called it quiet service or silent service or something like that whenever they're in the middle of a conversation and I'm trying to pick up plates or I'm trying to refill their drinks I don't say anything unless they speak to me so mm -hmm. obviously when I greet the table, I try to have conversation and I try to find common interests, but whenever it, they're eating and all that or having conversations, I just don't talk. And I feel like people appreciate that a lot. That's yeah. It sounds like you're good at 
not only communicating, but reading the room, I guess. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Do you have any people that you would consider regulars or like people that you recognize as good tippers, bad tippers? Like, how do you, do you identify people like that, that you've seen before? Yes, I will remember if someone tips me really well, I will remember who they are. Um, and I'll probably try to not necessarily steal them from someone, but I'll go up to whoever is supposed to be taking them and say, hey, do you want that table? Because I'll take it. Um, and if I, oh, if they yeah. have me, I'll well, treat really? them very well. Yeah, I know I definitely will. And if they don't tip well, I'm not saying I ignore them, but like, I'm not going to give them my all. I'm not going to put all my effort into them when I have other tables to worry about. Um, but at Lazari's, I probably have one or two regulars just because it's an Italian restaurant and people don't go there every single day. But at my first job I worked at, it was a breakfast and lunch restaurant, like a mom and pop type mm -hmm. stuff thing. And there was a lot of older people that I think just came to have someone to talk to every day. And they had I definitely had a lot of regulars there. They they pretty much put me through my first semester of college because I told everyone and they were all like, oh my gosh, here's all my money. Oh, but really? Yeah, I, they... I think a lot. So they knew kind of what you, what was going on in your life and they would support you through tipping oh, or what yeah. that look like? Yeah, I'd sit down with them and talk while they're eating if we were slow. Really? For that's sure. awesome. And they would appreciate that? Yeah, they asked about me all the time. Yeah. And then the ones at Lazari's, how does that look, I guess? Are, there's, uh, it's like a family and how, how did you connect with them or how did you foster that relationship? The one that comes to mind, it's a dad, his daughter, they pretty much, we just hit it off, made good conversation. And then they asked for my name. I asked for his name. And now every time he comes in, he just asks for me. I think sometimes it's just pers a person gets comfortable with who their server is and how their server will remember some of the stuff that they order. Like he can come in and I'll know what he wants. And so at this point, he just asked for me because he's comfortable with me. You know, so mm -hmm. he doesn't really have to worry about getting the right stuff or if the server is going to do the right job. He knows I am. So. He just right. knows my name and I actually, he follows me on Instagram. <laughs> does he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does anything like that give you, do, like, are you comfortable with that, I guess? I'm comfortable with it. It wasn't the first time he came in that he asked. I think it was probably after like the fifth or sixth. I feel like if someone just came in and asked for my Instagram or Facebook or something, I would be a little uncomfortable, but because he'd come in so much and he had a daughter, I mean, I wasn't right. really out by it and I mean I don't my Instagram is public anyway so I'm not necessarily worried about him seeing any kind of private information yeah I'm the same way like you know it's it's kind of fair game but right. I guess um you know I, I understand the unknown interests that some people may have or like you know there's a lot of different things that we hear so I I, I think that that's just a curiosity I have as far as like if you would be comfortable or not with that yeah have you ever given anyone your number? Yes. At my old restaurant at Dan's, there was an older man who would come in all the time and bring me gifts, but he had a wife. So I don't, I never really took it as flirty or uncomfortable, but he would like bring me earrings and he would like, he'd call me baby girl, but I think it was like as a grandfather type thing. Yeah. You know? So Absolutely. I gave him my number and he would always call and be like, are you working today? Can I come see you? Because he'd drive from Hot Springs to come see me. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome, yeah. right? Yeah. Do you have any um, unique tip stories, like anything that's happened that was like really like super generous or just like you were caught off guard by? Mm, I mean, I've definitely had a lot of big tips. Um, Nothing abnormal. Well, whenever I was leaving Dan's and I was about to go to college, <laughs> I was passing out a lot of graduation invitations just to see, you know, what I could get. I didn't think anyone would actually come to graduation. Yeah. But I a lot of people give me a card with $100 bills in it but my favorite story is one guy who would come in every single Sunday he gave me this lunch paper sack full of quarters it was $200 worth of quarters really? I, was, I was like these people really care this much that they're going to give me all this money like I, I definitely made over two grand just from that week of passing out invitations mm -hmm. I'm sure that's like I don't know I can't imagine that you know that's a really cool thing that people that you may have at one point considered strangers to be supporting you in a way, you know, just because of an act that you did that is your job, but like, yeah. you know, it does mean something to people. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, I feel like I would never see myself going into a restaurant and getting so close with a server that I would like, 
give them a hundred dollars. I mean, I would give a hundred dollars just to be nice if it was good service, but like, I, I don't feel like I'd ever have that kind of a relationship with a server. So I guess it's just weird to me to think about that people see me like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Is there a certain demographic that you think that is more common with? Like age, gender, family status, you know, like anything like that, that you I think is a trend? I think older people are more like that. And that could just be because they're lonely. And I, I know that sounds horrible, but I mean, most of them, like they've lost their wives or husbands and their kids have moved out. And so they kind of see me as another grandkid. And I, de yeah, I definitely see older people. So. Yeah. They probably, and you know, they probably see their kids and you, mm -hmm. or you yeah. could, because you are so young. So right. it's like, you know, they get it. And maybe they had been there at one point too doing yeah. the same thing that you're doing so that's really interesting mm -hmm. um as far as the like the way that people perceive tipping and like the the image or I don't, I don't necessarily know what to call it um but like how would what would you say is the standard for tipping like a, a good honest way of calculating what your tip should be I like, I mean, obviously I like 20%, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I don't feel like it has, I don't know. I'm really weird about it. I don't feel like it has to be 20% because it's one thing if you're ordering appetizers or desserts and drinks and all that, but like, if you just got kind of an expensive meal, I don't really see why that should influence how large your tip is. If you're just getting two, like two steaks, that doesn't make me work more. So I don't really see why you have to tip more, but um, yeah. So at Dan's, it was like a lot cheaper because it was just breakfast. I thought $5 was a good tip, but now at Lazari's, I'm kind of expecting more $10, $15 on every ticket. Okay, that's yeah. cool. That's interesting. So you're saying that if someone got like the most expensive thing on the menu, but just a two top, you would still expect maybe a 20? Mm, yeah. Yeah, probably uh, 20 or 15. Okay, I, cool. I think I see more as like a four top, like a family, mom, dad, and two kids as a $20 tip. Right. Interesting. Yeah. That's, I've never heard that perspective, but that's kind of, that's kind of unique. Do you yeah. see, um, sorry, does your video, is it moving on your end? No, it's not. I was wondering if that was for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe turn off your um, camera and back on if that is something that you can see. And then, okay, perfect. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was me or you. Okay. No, I couldn't tell either. And I was just like, um, I like, <laughs> I felt like I lost some of your animation. So I wanted to make sure that was good. Sorry about that. No, it's fine. Um, is there anything that you think someone that you, or is there anything that you would want to communicate to someone who may have never worked in an industry like that? Or, um, you know, like what's, what's your message to the people? <laughs> I am surprised at how many people don't know that we don't make minimum wage. Like I mm -hmm. have had so, I mean, it's rude for us to say it. It's rude for me to go to the table and be like, Hey, I only make $2 an hour. Please tip me. But there are so many people who don't understand that I literally make money off of them. And because I work so much, at least at this restaurant now, I work so much, the way that they do the checks is if I make so much money, obviously they tax what I make. And so if I make enough money throughout the week, I get a $0 check. And that's really, really common for me. So if someone isn't tipping me, then I'm not making money. And I don't, I just feel like there's a lot of people that don't understand it. Like a $1 tip, Austin says it all the time. I could find that on the ground. And it is a little, it's kind of, it's, to me, I take tips as criticism or constructive, like constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. So if someone gives me a dollar tip, I don't know if they're telling me I'm doing horrible or if they just genuinely don't understand. And that's why I just kind of wish it was more public knowledge that servers don't make money because I want to know if I'm doing good or not. Yeah. You know? That's pretty cool too, that you, you know, you, you may not take it so personally, or you think that they're just kind of rude, that, but you self-reflect in those moments yeah. if you get a bad tip. Yeah. I That's mean, pretty... I want people to have a good experience and I don't want to be the reason that they don't. Yeah. That's cool.